Why, hello there, you sexy bees, Vaddy were here, and welcome back to another episode of Skyrim Mods Boobs and Lubes, a Skyrim mod review that has a fantastic story attached to it. In the previous episode, we got these sexy bikinis, and we are now breaking them in with some nice fun time in the water. Wait, 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 whoa, what the? What was that noise? Uh oh, it looks like the monsters are coming out of the portals that we were using in the previous episode. Oh no, we gotta do something about this and luckily there is something we can do which is nearby. Tamriel of Tanks by M150 introduces tanks into Skyrim. Yep, totally lore friendly. It introduces 5 tanks from the World War II era and all of them is from the German army which goes pretty well with the German bikini from the previous episode. Ah yes, showcasing tanks with bikini clad girls. What can be better? It makes me kind of want to watch the anime Girls Own Panza again, and uh, we're probably going to make some references uh, throughout this episode. The dwarven military base can be found north of Windhelm. Before we take a look at the tanks, there are some accessories that we're gonna take a look at. There are supplies that we can take. Inside this chest, we have the dwarven military cap, a baton, and some spell books. The military cap looks like an officer's cap. The caps are pretty huge, actually. It's probably to give a sense of authority. It removes your current hairstyle and it replaces it with something else. It's probably to prevent clipping issues. Next, we have the baton, which is a dagger, and the baton does have a use when we're in a tank. I don't think I'd be using it for combat or anything. The spell books can be used to summon one tank and only one tank only. When I try to summon more tanks or different tanks, the first tank disappears, so unfortunately we cannot have a huge tank army. Aww. The best part is obviously the tanks. First up, we have the Yag Panther, and it's a tank designed specifically for hunting tanks. It is equipped with a self-propelled anti-tank gun, and it's heavily armored on the front. Now, it doesn't really have a turret, so it kinda has to rely on moving the whole tank in order to aim. Now, let's ride in this tank killer, shall we? Alright, let's get in. Oh man, that looks so freaking cool. Oh. Now it's 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 pretty similar to riding a horse and oddly it makes footsteps while it moves. Now when we bust out the baton, it does have an auto fire function for the tank, but so far I have not found much use of it. Maybe it's a bug or something since it just causes explosions near me. Now I prefer to dismount off the tank and let it fire naturally. Now I gotta say that it's really not very overpowered. In my opinion, it might be a little bit weak since it takes up to a dozen shells to kill an enemy. Yeah, it's like this troll right here. Yep, the troll is taking hits like a man. The next tank is the Tiger. Ah yes, the good old Tiger from World War II. Now it's a heavy tank with a big 88mm gun and it has heavy armor. Now one of these bad boys can take out an enemy tank at far range and they're resistant to enemy tank fire. However, it was rather complicated to produce and it broke down a lot. Again, let's ride in this badass motherfucker. Oh man, I just feel like a tank commander with my military cap and being on top of the turret. With the Tiger tank, you will pretty much destroy anything and everything in your path. So uh, let's go attack the same troll again since it's right there. Oh man, nothing like having a 88mm tank round up your asshole. Oh man. The third tank is the Sturmgesutz, and it's also known as the Stug 3. It has a 75mm gun and it's also on a non-rotating turret. Now it does have a low profile, making it harder for enemies to hit it, and it's one of the most mass-produced German armored vehicle in World War II. So again, let's get into the Stug, and damn, I can't stop looking at my handsome self. Oh man, I'm so handsome. Anyways, let's go kill that poor poor troll again just because we can and just because it's close by. 
Alright, so uh, let's go this way because I have a hard time turning. Ah, uh, yes. Again, the, the movements are kind of based off a horse after all. I can't, it cannot make tight turns. Pretty much it's the same deal. We unmount and the tank fires away. Now, sadly, again, I kind of wish that I could have a bunch of tanks following me at once. The fourth tank was the Panzer II. It was a tank that appeared throughout World War II. It has a 22mm gun, which is much smaller than the previous tank guns that we looked at. But hey, we're not trying to make up for something, right? If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. It was a medium tank that was used in a wide variety of roles. And uh, let's get into the Panzer II, shall we? Ah yes, it's definitely the smallest of the tanks here. I guess we'll go back to the troll and attack it. And uh, yeah, the troll is going to be lucky because uh, we'll be attacking it with such a small, small gun. The troll is probably not going to feel it, if you know what I mean. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the last tank is the Kugelpanzer, and it's a strange looking tank actually. It's a prototype developed for doing recon missions by the Germans. Now, to me, it looks like a tricycle to be honest. A steel cylinder tricycle, I'd imagine it probably did not work too well if it even went on the field, and it's probably a death trap. Now let's get into this interesting contraption, shall we? Oh my, I feel so silly. You know what, this is this kind of looks like I'm riding in a chariot or something, <laughs> with a gun in front. Okay, uh, now, I hadn't, uh, now I have not really had the chance to test out the cannon damage, between the tanks, but it seems to me that they do the same or similar damage. Yeah, it's kind of a weird vehicle to use, to be honest. <laughs> now here are the first person view of riding in all these tanks, and so far I love this mod, I mean I, I really like World War 2, I play a lot of World War 2 games, you know, like uh, uh, Call of Duty World at War, I uh, play the, the old Medal of Honor series, and uh, you know, I play a lot of Day of Defeat, so this type of a kind of a mod is very very awesome, and I hope to see more, the only thing I would like to change is maybe have actual kind of sound effects when the tank is moving, instead of like those oh, footsteps, that, that's my opinion. Tamriel of Tanks is inspired by the game World of Tanks, and a lot of you sexy beasts and viewers play that game before, and I'm thinking of maybe trying that game out, so if I do, does any of you sexy beasts want to invite me to a good guild or clan or something? <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to play uh, World of Tanks or War Thunder, they both had tanks in it, so yeah. With my mechanized infantry, we need a way to carry our gear and supplies into battle. Big leather backpack by Hi284 makes my girls look like real soldiers. The backpack comes in a few variety. It comes in big size and small size. The big size having higher carrying capacity. It comes in two colors, brown and black. There is also a regular version and a soul gem version. So basically when you craft one of the soul gem version, you get double the carrying capacity of the same size of the regular version. The oversized backpack is so cute in my opinion, <laughs> especially with my musket. Now it does kind of remind me of the game I played a long time ago called Mount and Blade Warband. Ah yes, nothing like shooting muskets at the enemy and hoping it's gonna hit them. <laughs> <laughs> the big leather backpack can be crafted at the tanning rack under the miscellaneous section. Alright, time to get this party started. Okay, let's go guys. Alright. Long live Caesar! Oh wait, long live Kaiser! <laughs> Alright, looks like we're going to be fighting at this... Oh, look at them, look at them horsies. Oh, they're trying to flank us. Alright, okay, okay. Alright, let's get behind this building for cover, guys. Okay, I got this shit. Got this shit. Oh, oh, I see him. I see that motherfucker. I got you, buddy. I got you. Come on. Oh, oh I missed that. Oh, come on. Oh, this is bullshit. Okay, let me peek around the corner. Okay, I think... Oh, yep, there's a couple people there. Oh, there's no way I could fucking miss. There's like two, three guys there. Bam! Oh, oh my god, I can't believe I hit him. Oh, look at that, Vadiwa killed Black Legion, get in my box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, I gotta I got reload now. 
Alright. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, 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 that son of a bitch. However, we're gonna need someone to carry the wood to power our tanks, so we have the Kikori set by Mao. It comes with a backpack that is mostly for appearances and an axe. The Kikori set can be found in a chest next to the Riverwood Sawmill. Now that's pretty much it with this mod, it's mostly for aesthetic purposes, it's mostly for looks. Now this is pretty much all we gotta know about it, and it looks like Mio is the one that's gonna be doing the wood carrying duty. Now I don't really want to have this as our only base, so I think maybe we should go find ourselves like a headquarter or something. Ah yes, this castle right here will make a fine Nazi, I mean German base. Shadow Star Castle by Laz is a big ass fortified castle built into a mountain. We approach the castle from the stairs and we are on the outer courtyard. Now it has a fountain and there are two gates leading into the inner courtyard. Once we go to the gate, we are in the inner courtyard, and the inner courtyard is an uh, enclosed area. And this is going to be where we're going to enter the castle. To enter the Shadowstar castle, we're going to need a key, which can be bought by talking to the sign to the left of the door. After that, we just enter it. Once inside, the first room is the throne room, because that's the very important room to show everyone your power. Now I have these two lovely guards keeping watch while I just sit on my drone. Oh yes, they're, they're quite lovely indeed. So yes, there are NPCs in the castle. The first area we're going to be taking a look at is the dining area. Inside we have a large banquet hall where we can enjoy plenty of booze and have a good time. There are plenty of side areas as well, like a table for kids and people who you don't really like. Then nearby, we have a kitchen with plenty of food cooking. Mm -mm, hey, wait a second. Who is that naughty girl drinking and getting boozed up already? Huh? Ah, Tokata. Well, enjoy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, stay safe. Don't, you know, don't drink too much. Upstairs, we have the lounging area. And then, there is a bar. The next area is the display hall, and in the display hall we have plenty of mannequins, display cases, and weapons rack to store your gear. And then a little bit further down in this hall we have a place where there's a bunch of chests to store all of our items from our adventures. Now there's also another area nearby, and it's going to be the library. Now this is a relaxing place to do your research or to store books. And it even has a lounge area, yes, every pr pretty much every area has a lounge area, and it's to make it more comfortable while studying. And then there's this cool and mystical looking area with writing flowing on the walls, ooh, mysterious. Now there is a basement down these stairs, and the first area we encounter is the forge and crafting area. And then around the corner we have another study area, maybe it's used for planning and prepping for attacks. The other side of the room we have an enchanting and alchemist area. Now the best part is that there is a pool here for some odd reason. <laughs> it seems like in every section there's always a pool or a bar. But you know, pools are always cool. Now there is a trap door in the basement that leads to the sub basement. And here it is, this black looking thing. In the sub basement, we have the prisons, where you probably don't want to go and you probably don't want to drop the soap. This is where we keep all of our prisoners and slave. Now the creepy thing is that there is a room nearby in one of these side rooms. And in this side room we have some meat cooking on the cooking spit. Now hopefully that's not the prisoners <laughs> that they're cooking. And over here we have a bar and it looks like the chef is here. Hey chef. I hope you're not cooking the prisoners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyways, upstairs we have the dining room where all the guards for the prison probably eat meat. Yes, yummy prison meat. Now let's go back to the main prison area and across the room we have what looks to be the sleeping quarters of the guards. Now this room looks pretty damn nice actually for just a lowly prison guard. It's very bright, clean and well kept. 
Anyways, uh, let's let's head back to the drawing room now. There is also a second story as well. So let's take a look at the, some of these side rooms up here. And uh, we have a round table to discuss some random crap. And then out of here, on the other end of the hallway, we have a little atrium where we can plant some stuff. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. In the next area, um... Well, we'll take a look at that later. Uh, the next area we're gonna go to is going to be the bedrooms. So the bedroom area is pretty big and it could house a lot of people. This is going to be the master bedroom. Ah yes, nice comfy bed for you and your mate and it's very red, oh, very sharp, very, very nice place. And then we have the pool. We always need a pool because why not? Now back in the main hall, across from the master bedroom, we have the children's room where we can have multiple children, we could adopt multiple children and they could stay here. Now I just hope that the damn kids don't fight and cause a trouble, cause a ruckus. Alright, so uh, back to the main room again, we have this huge huge pool area and um, there are the side rooms, like uh, rooms for your followers to sleep in. Man, it looks like 4 star hotel rooms right here. And then we have the bathing area. Again, don't drop the soap. <laughs> ah, man. Now pick up the, soap. the pool is pretty big and all homes need pool in my opinion. Especially since bikinis are awesome. Yes, I think every game should have bikinis and a pool. No question about it. And finally, we have a bar. And I just hope that we don't get drunk and we get passed out in the pool and drown. Hopefully that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Alcohol and water doesn't work. The last area we're gonna be taking a look at is back at the hallway, if you guys remember. We go up these stairs and then we end up outside. We have these catapults right here and we can use them for artillery support. And they are usable. Ah, yes, that's pretty. Tanks and artillery support. There's no way we can lose. There's another catapult on the other um, little tower looking thing. And let's fly on over and uh, let's set that one off too. Okay, 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 okay. Ah, so satisfying. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be beautiful. Anyways, I am Vadiwa, I think this is a good place to pause, and in the next episode, I hope that we're gonna be ready to attack the monsters invading our land from the portal. Or we might do some more prep work. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to bang that like button to show your support. It really helps me get my videos out there. Follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, and Steam group. Links can be found in the video description below. Also, I would appreciate it if you guys show some love to my non-Skyrim videos. They're important to me as well and it can really help me keep making Skyrim mod reviews. One more thing, I would love to know which is your favorite tank from this mod. I would love to know, let me know in the comments section below. Well then, stay sexy my friends, stay sexy.